we are going to talk about verbal communication barriers and how they can jam up an otherwise helpful discussion. We are especially focusing on group discussions, but this is applicable to almost all conversations. And we are working out of BB and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. I'll put a link to their book in the description below the video. So let's get into those details. So the key point is that verbal communication choices, your choices will directly influence the results of your conversations, whether you're a participant or a leader. It's especially true though for leaders. Language can directly affect a group's effectiveness. In fact, there was a study by Mayfield and Mayfield in 2015 that showed a 10% increase in the leader's use of motivating language resulted in a 2.5% increase in the quality of the follower's decision-making. So here's what that means. As the leader used more deliberately motivating language, followers' decision-making improved. There's a measurable difference. In other words, your language choices, especially as a leader, but even as participants, changes the outcome. So it's really important that we get serious about the way we communicate and talk and be careful and thoughtful about what we say. And we're going to look at barriers that you can hear yourself say possibly and make sure you try to get rid of. So the first common barrier word barrier is bypassing. Very common. Bypassing is when two people assign different meanings to the same word. There are lots of words that can be understood in a variety of ways. Now think about just this quick sample I thought of. Love, romance, quality, help, serious, soon. Like just the word soon. If I say that'll be done soon, that may mean something to me in my head, and you may have a completely different understanding of what the word soon means. So if I use words like this without clarifying, then that could be a bypassing issue that we are experiencing. Like you said soon, well, I did get it to you soon. And then you have a big argument about this. This happens in interpersonal relationships and friendships and marriages, and it certainly happens in the workplace. I see it all the time happen. In fact, there was a study done that showed that the 500 most frequently used words in the English language have more than 14,000 dictionary definitions. So I don't have a monopoly on what the correct understanding of a word is. We have to work that out. So a possible fix to this is feedback. So if somebody says something to you and maybe it's a little ambiguous, you can double check it with them. You can ask them, is this what you mean? And you can do the same if you're the one speaking. You want to ask them a question to see if they're understanding. So a little back and forth feedback just for a few moments can really make sure you avoid this allness word barrier, this bypassing word barrier, excuse me. The next one is allness. Number two, allness is where we make simple but untrue generalizations. This is really common. You hear this all the time, especially about genders. I don't know why, but some people would say things like, oh, women are smarter than men. That's a huge allness or generalization statement, or athletes aren't good students. I've heard this so many times, I teach college and they say, oh, athletes don't make good students. Most of my athletes have been outstanding students, very hard workers. I just don't find it to be true. I don't find it to hold up. But it doesn't stop people from making these big generalizations. So allness can be a huge word barrier, a big verbal communication barrier because it reinforces stereotypes. And essentially it takes away possible common ground that you could have with the other speaker, the other listener. So what you wanna do as a possible fix is to qualify your statements and be specific. Many situations are unique and you don't want to generalize everything too hastily. Number three, a fact inference confusion. In fact, I may make a whole separate video on this. This is a big one. That's when someone responds to something as if they have actually observed it. It's a fact, in other words, but the reality is they just have drawn a conclusion about it. So let's say I saw someone that I know that I'm already feeling a little weird or paranoid about walking through my building. I might draw the conclusion, oh, that person's snooping around. So the fact is they walked through the building. My inference is they were snooping around. They were spying on us. Uh, I, have, I know someone who makes the, these kinds of generalizations sometimes, and I think, you know, that's maybe there's more to it. Maybe there's more to it. And the, the fact is they walked through the building. You were jumping to a conclusion that they're snooping around. So this happens when people speculate about or interpret what they think occurred 
but state it as if it's a verified certainty. He'll destroy our country. That's probably been said about almost every person that's ever, every man anyway, who's ever run for president in the last few decades. He'll destroy our country. Like it's an absolute certainty, even though the country hasn't been completely destroyed yet. (laughs) So a possible fix for this is to practice and double check recognizing the difference. So as you hear yourself talk, recognize, am I making a jump in logic here? Am I jumping too far based on what I observed? Uh, Don't state things definitively if you haven't observed the actual thing. So some key learning points here is that give more thought to how we make statements. Hear yourself say it before you say it. Make make a decision. Is this how I want to come across? Use feedback to double check your understanding in a situation and to make sure you have common ground. And practice reflecting on the facts before you make jumps in conclusion. So question of the day, where do you hear yourself in any of these? Do you make these kinds of errors when you're communicating? Do you have any kind of word barriers like these that come up in your conversations? Typically, we do have difficulty misunderstanding each other in conversations. And these three verbal word barriers are often the culprit. I would love to hear your comments, your feedback in that section below the video. Thanks, and I will see you soon.